We had a two and a half hour block of free time in the schedule, and I wanted to spend it all on the plateau. Plan of attack was to start at the third pyramid and work our way towards the Great Pyramid. As we were leaving the resort, a guide did try to talk us out of it due to safety. Aggressive vendors, scammers, thieves, but we were steadfast. He quickly educated us regarding common tactics and how to deal with them, advice we ended up using, and gave us his cell number. In transit, we were able to admire three sides of the second pyramid and get a top view of the west side, which was quarried for blocks as well as to achieve a level base. I was so excited I agreed to a selfie. And I went rogue from the group. We came up to the plateau by ourselves. So straight ahead, that's the Great Pyramid or the Khufu Pyramid. This is Khafre. So still is the casing stones on the top. And then we've got Menkore and some casing stones on the bottom. Menkore is closed, so we're not gonna be able to go in. But we are going to get in to see the uh, Khafre. And then later on tonight, we're getting a private viewing of the Khufu Pyramid in all three chambers. Tourists only get to one chamber, but we're going in all three. This pyramid is attributed to Menkare and is the smallest of the three main Giza pyramids, dated circa 2510 BCE, 4th Dynasty, Old Kingdom. 125 cubits high, 200 cubits for the base, slope angle of 51 degrees, 20 minutes. The core blocks are limestone and the remaining casing stones are granite. It's said that the bottom 16 courses were granite and everything above that was Tura limestone. The large gash is said to be part of a demolition attempt from the 12th dynasty AD. I'd start at the top, but what do I know? The internal chamber layout appears to be more chaotic than the other two pyramids. It's like a mashup of a tomb from the Valley of the Kings and the side chambers at Abu Simbel. Just like the Red and Great Pyramid, Menkare also has the concavities. Aside from the area where the entrance is located, the casing stones were left unhewn. Block size is non-standard, joint angles vary, and nubs are present similar to ancient Peruvian structures. A lot of the fallen granite shows signs of later quarrying, predominantly splitting them into smaller blocks. Almost look like they're showing you their development of design. Looks like a three tiered step pyramid. Starting to slope it. And then the more well known true slope pyramid. This is the middle satellite pyramid behind Menkara. Huge base block. And then a stack of two to equal the height. Different widths. A little sliver to make up this height. More standardized block on the second level. It's the back side of the Mankari Pyramid. I'm seeing a bunch of granite stones. Look like they have a big saw mark through the middle. There. That one. Those. Also on the true pyramidal satellite, you can see some of the casing stones. The bottom layer is granite and it has those little nubs on it. Here's a close up of one of those blocks. It looks more like it's trenched out to be split probably later times after it was all busted up falling apart the three satellite pyramids are in rough shape and a pack of feral dogs have claimed ownership of the one on the far right i'm not sure if the two step pyramids ever had casing stones but the one on the far left appeared to have at least one layer of granite then limestone above Khafre, 
and the Khufu Pyramid tucked behind it. There's the city of Cairo. It's literally right there. It's amazing how close to the city these pyramids are. There's some camels. People getting camel rides in the desert. Backside of the pyramidal satellite behind Menkare. The granite course. Weird nub on the top. Pyramidal satellite pyramid behind Mankare. I'm not sure if this corner is sunken back or if they purposely leaned it in like this, like a retaining wall. It looks purposeful. The nubs are still on the granite. And then there's this blocked off shaft. And it is narrow, but it goes in. I can't see the end of it. This area of blackened sand and a few rocks was a bit curious. Then a closer look at some of the granite casing before moving on to the mortuary temple. The other side of Menkure granite casing. The east side of the pyramid also has a flat area within the casing stones, which leads many to believe there's a second entrance. There's a lot of speculation regarding which blocks are removable, but I'd say dig here. Especially after seeing this old picture. The mortuary temple appears to be two to three separate phases of construction. Some areas are built using smaller blocks, while others employ the massive blocks with the arduous shaping techniques. There's some heavy erosion, and a few walls are even scribed to the slope of the pyramid. Just like with the Valley and Sphinx Temple, we see granite blocks which have been carved to match up with a heavily eroded limestone. How long was this structure just limestone? When and why was it cased with granite? And why not just face off the limestone to a flat surface? What made it so sacred? What remains of the floor is polygonal, Possibly alabaster. The strangest area is this hallway with these random granite blocks that seem to stick out further on the face. They haven't been finished off. This one has the upper lip. This one has the lip on three sides, three sides, three sides, three sides, and the nubs at the bottom. Three sides. A series of little, uh, Hallways and one chamber over there. Again, the pyramid. If we exit out over here, take a left. We come up behind Khafre. After a few last looks at this pyramid, we headed towards the south side of Khafre, 